of welcome and compassion in their communities. On the Housing and Homelessness Initiatives front, uh, the Housing and Homelessness Initiatives Director will be attending the 6th Annual Re Alberta Recovery Conference on February 21st to 23rd next week. And this conference focuses on reco recovery-oriented systems that build recovery capital, a, and it's a province-wide uh, direction. Uh, with regards to the Winter Emergency Response, uh, which is located at South Bear Creek and managed by Wapiti House staff, uh, it's a grant-funded temporary MAT program that alleviates shelter capacities as a result of the closure of OASIS. Uh, this uh, temporary overnight program is only operational during evening hours, and uh, the mobile outreach provides transportation to that particular uh, site. And Wapiti House reports that on average, there are 12 to 15 individuals utilizing the program, and the program ends on March 31st, uh, 2023. Um, with regards to uh, housing and homelessness, uh, the department is hosting a workshop session for local agencies to seek their valued, valued input on identifying needs, gaps, and priorities in the community. The department will meet with agencies uh, Thursday, February 16th, so this week, and uh, sessions aiming to support Indigenous people will be held Friday of this week on February 17th. Um, with uh, regards to enforcement services, the city enforcement and RCMP are now mirroring a similar schedule with the watches. So briefings between both agencies have been taking place, taking a collaborative approach towards community concerns. And enforcement has been assisting RCMP regarding a mischief investigation in which a fire was started uh, beside uh, City Hall near an air intake. So that's ongoing, that investigation. And uh, with regard, the public security unit responded to the public library for a protest during a children's book reading. The protesters made it inside the facility for a short period of time and were then redirected outside. Protesters of the event were grossly outnumbered by supporters of the event, and the event was attended by over 200 participants. Update from the RCM or RCMP. I'd just like to report, uh, uh, first of all, with regards to the uh, police review that uh, MNP's report will be presented at the Council Committee of the Whole on February 21st. That's next week. And if recommended to go to Council, the report would then be presented at the March 6th, 2023 Council meeting. Uh, the Grand Prairie RCMP municipal officers with the assistance from rural officers, a crime reduction unit, police dog services, K division, RCMP air services, and uh, um, recently laid charges during an operation. So on January 29th, Grand Prairie RCMP conducted an operation to uh, target repeat offenders who flee during traffic stops. Office officers attempted a traffic stop of a vehicle they believed had been stolen earlier in the day. The suspect vehicle did not stop and fled from police at a high rate of speed. The officers did not pursue, and air services took over surveillance of the suspect vehicle. Once the suspect vehicle had stopped and the occupants had exited the vehicle, air services was able to provide directions to police who located and arrested two males. The driver of the vehicle is a resident of Sony Plain, Alberta, and he was wanted for numerous warrants for similar offenses. Uh, out of the Edmonton area, and he's now being charged with several offenses. And following a ju judicial hearing, one individual was remanded to custody and scheduled to appear in provincial court on February 8th. Uh, also on January 29th, uh, Grand Prairie RCMP were conducting a curfew check at a residence in Grand Prairie on a person previously charged with drug trafficking. The male did not present himself to the door, nor was he located on the property. So on February, uh, February 3rd, RCMP returned to the residence, located the subject, and arrested him for breaching release conditions. And during his search of the mail, uh, incidental to the arrest, officers located what is believed to be a number of uh, drug items and some cash. So the uh, that resident has been charged and uh, has been remanded in custody to appear in provincial court on February the 6th. With regards to mobile outreach, the mobile outreach has become a lax loan distribution site and will be able to provide training kits uh, to recipients. Um, mobile outreach has successfully filled three positions, including a team lead, uh, one uh, full-time outre outreach worker and one casual outreach worker. And the mobile outreach team lead will be attending a nonviolent crisis intervention training next week to become a certified instructor. Um, update with the Community Knowledge Campus uh, on February 3rd to the 5th, the 45th Annual U13 Classic Tournament 
was held with 12 teams, 364 participants, and approximately 650 spectators at the Design Works Center. And on February 7th, the uh, GP Athletics home game was held with 700 tickets sold. Um, the organizers of the Racquetball Canada team selections have reported a huge success for their event with 50 plus high performance athletes from across Canada and that event was streamed live. Um, with the increased foot traffic on a walking and running track as well as user experience feedback, improvements have been made including additions of the uh, functional fitness corner, additional seating and resting benches, more lockers and coat hooks. So we really appreciate the feedback that we get from our customers because that's how we make these improvements. Um, on Family Day, there'll be a free Family Day event on Sunday, February the 19th at the Design Works Centre and East Link Centre. Uh, we expect that this will be our busiest day at the CKC campus this year. And counselors have been invited to join the Learn to Powwow and the Powwow demonstration being held uh, uh, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, with regards to uh, sport development, wellness and culture, our play care at East Link serves children ages one to seven and visits are on the rise with a record number of 1,014 children attending in the month of January alone. Uh, the activity center, uh, there'll be free drop-in opportunities at the activity and reception center uh, that begins today and is being offered Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 6 p.m. during youth times, uh, Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. for toddlers and Saturdays from 1 to 3 p.m. for all ages um, as a community drop-in. So program instructions will be on site to assist with facilitating play uh, during youth and community drop-in times. An update with regards to funding for the Alberta Winter Games. Uh, County Council approved $200,000 in funding for the Alberta Winter Games, plus up to $50,000 gift in kind through facilities and employee volunteer time. And also a reminder, the MD Greenview has also approved $100,000 with $75,000 going towards a matching portion of a, a grant for Nighthawk uh, for repairs to the hill in preparation for the Games. Lastly, an update on transit, Mr. Chair. So uh, with regards to accessible transit, we have a total of 655 registered uh, accessible transit clients. Uh, we delivered 7,205 trips in the fourth quarter of 2022 and added 47 new clients. Uh, currently, we have an accessible transit survey running and the results will be reported uh, once that closes. Uh, with regards to on-demand, uh, we've delivered 4,511 rides in Q4, so the ridership continues to steadily increase. And on-demand survey, there was a survey that ended on February the 10th, and we'll be providing uh, outcomes of that shortly. Uh, with regards to conventional transit, uh, uh, the ridership continues to grow slowly, but it continues to grow with an increase of 5.8% in the fourth quarter of 2022. And system reliability now close to 100% with all routes arriving downtown on time, except uh, when there's a train delay. So the results are uh, very favorable. That's my report, Mr. Chair. I apologize for the lengthy report, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, definitely uh, appreciate it. I agree that free drop in activities is worth the fanfare. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Councillor Bosch. Hello, thank you. Um, my question is, I noticed on this was on the 10th of February that the activity center was closed down for a private event. Is that something that we commonly do? And was there any issues because of that? Yeah, I don't have the exact answer of how frequently that happens, but it does happen from time to time, but I'll get, uh, I'll get an answer to a uh, committee on that. It's probably, I just am not aware that that, that just surprised me um, because if it's open to everybody all the time, this impacts people that maybe aren't paying attention to online. So, thank you. Is there anybody else? Not seeing any, so thank you for the report. And the next item of business we have is Food Security Committee update, and, I, uh, and that's Ms. Sutherland. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so at the October uh, 17, 2022 council, 2022 council meeting, um, Mr. Kim and Mr. Napier came forward as a delegation to request council um, 
attendance uh, as a part of the Food Security Committee. So at that time, um, it was identified that administration was a part of the committee, so I had deferred it back to administration and report back on this said committee. So for committee's awareness, um, administration has been a part of this committee since 2018. Some notable highlights from the past include um, providing seed funding for Salvation Army and Fr uh, Friendship Center to start the community kitchen, which as we know is a really successful partnership to date. Um, we've also helped with some grant writing for Friendship Center to se secure some additional funding for their community kitchen. And we continue to work with them. Um, through the COVID-19, uh, the focus was back on trying to secure uh, food for people during the pandemic, so the priority had shifted. So now that we're back in action, um, we've continued to work with them now um, to help formalize and move forward strategically on their plans to address food security in our community. So some of the things that we're moving forward on with them are mapping out exactly what services are, are uh, in the community, what duplications may be happening, and where we can leverage opportunities to really um, reduce food insecurity in our community. Um, the first step is actually knowing what's happening so we understand exactly who's doing what and to work collectively together to address this issue. Part of that will include a survey that we'll be working with um, Mr. Napier and Mr. Kim on, as well as they are expanding their membership to their committee to include more diverse members um, in order to really maximize impact as a collective. So as we know, food security is an ongoing issue and we continue to affect more residents due to increases in cost of living and inflation. So administration will continue to support this initiative as it's very important work. Um, administration has also attached the terms of reference for committee's review, as well as um, a link that was really interesting regarding some statistics around food security. So that's my report. I'll be hope, happy to answer any questions. So thank you. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Chair Bressy, and thank you, Ms. Sutherland, for the report. Uh, just a question in regards to strategy. Uh, so in regards to establishing uh, the relationships, so uh, in 2020, we really put our edible landscaping into full effect uh, in that policy. Uh, we created a learning garden that I know most of the most of the produce that comes out of the learning garden at the, at the Design Work Center um, goes to the food bank. But in the first years of that program with GP Grows, we created potato patches in the numerous uh, orchards that are scattered around the town now. Um, and I know that we haven't kept up with that as much as we did originally. I know it would be a cheap way to address food security, especially if you're just planting potatoes. Have you had any of those discussions on how you can leverage our policy as edible landscaping in the spaces that we've provided in the orchards for gardening to create food for the food bank? Um, thanks for the question. Um, I think there's definitely opportunities to really uh, look at that uh, policy and advance that, that that would be part of the strategy moving forward. I do know that um, historically we have uh, GP Grows has been a, a part of a, a partner by donating some of the said goods from from the, the potatoes and things like that and donating them to Community Kitchen. But I think there's definitely more of a strategic approach we can take. Awesome. Thank you. Councillor Blackmore. Um, thank you, Councillor Bressy. One of the um, issues with food security that remains um, more or less unaddressed across the province is uh, the um, issue of lack of food for children who are in school. And I'm wondering uh, if your policy is looking at any kind of feeding program uh, for uh, those schools, for all schools, not specific schools, but for all schools. Yes. Thank you, Thuda Chair. Excellent question. Um, we have been in several discussions over the years uh, with the school districts. Um, we are very well aware in, their, in, in my conversations with uh, Superintendent McDonald. Um, we do know that uh, we, they are an active partner in this in terms of trying to address all of it collectively. So it's not just addressing one school or one school board. It's around how do they partner. Um, everybody has this particular piece of say for example funding, how do we collectively work together to address uh, feeding and uh, with not only children but our community overall. So they are an active partner in this discussion on how to address that because that's a big part of food insecurity. And there was a, can I continue? Please. Sorry. There was a, uh, a program in place to provide school lunches at uh, Avondale and Hillside um, and I'm wondering if that still exists, if that survived COVID. I'm through the chair. Uh, I'm not at this point, uh, I don't know for sure if they still have the, 
the program at Avondale? I can actually, SX, my wife actually was doing that work through COVID and I can confirm that at Avondale at least that was happening. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Chair Bressy. Just to add on to the comments about the schools, just uh, last week we were, many of us were in Ottawa and they promoted over, over their new newscasts constantly about Toonies for Tummies, Tummies for Toonies, Toonies for Tummies. And maybe that's a program that we could look into uh, for all of the schools. And it seems to be um, a fantastic approach to food security in the school system. I think it was Toonies for Tummies. Not seeing anybody else with their hands up, but a question? I, oh, sorry, Mayor oh. Clinton. Okay. Great. Uh, well, I'll put myself in the queue now anyways. <laughs> um, I'm curious, I know that with the uh, Coordinated Care Campus, a uh, big lure of that building was that it's got a large commercial kitchen, and we thought that there might be opportunity there to leverage that kitchen to serve other organizations and serve people outside the Coordinated Care Campus. Are we having any conversations about that yet, or is it still a wait and see when it comes to using that kitchen until we're fully operational in there? Um, through the chair, thanks for the question. I think that there's, active, uh, there's been active conversations around the potential for that kitchen. Um, we are waiting to get everything set up and move in there, and then we'll explore that further. But definitely have been discussions on the opportunities. Excellent. Mayor Clayton, are you ready? No. Okay, Councillor Plot. Thanks, Chair Bressy. Um, just on the member selection, just kind of going back to Councillor Blackmore's um, comment, I uh, feel very s similar on that. I'm just, I'm not seeing the school districts as part of our process and profile of who we want to identify. I'm just wondering if we should be actually saying we want the, th the school divisions as part of this conversation. It's just not identified on there. And my, my second comment is we've got business leaders wrote down there, which I think is great. Um, Having said that, though, I think this is very specific, and I think if we could target restaurants and grocery stores specifically on this one, I think there's an opportunity there. Um, I just hate to see it be lost, thinking we're, we're looking for high net worth individuals and not actually groups that probably have a more um, direct uh, link to be able to help this out. So just some comments from me. Thanks. Through the chair, thank you for the comments. Um, definitely, uh, administration will take this back and tweak this terms of reference because the school, we have recognized the school division. They've always been a, a partner in the, this discussion and they were a part of actively as a food security committee uh, when it started. So that should be on here. And um, definitely, it, the restaurants have been in discussion with both Mr. Napier and Mr. Kim. Okay, great. I appreciate it. I just think there's opportunities. We, we talk lots about how the opportunities to work with major organizations in the city and our, our school districts play a major role in our community. So it'd be nice to find more synergies with them. Uh, Mayor Clayton, then Councillor Tiesel, then Councillor Bosch. Um, just to follow up on Councillor Plot's question in regard to school districts, it should be all school districts, like Peace Wapiti as well. Okay, perfect. Um, my question is, I don't see anywhere deliverables and timelines. Um, we know that food scarcity is an issue. Mr. Kim was here last week. We hear it regularly in the media that 20% of our community is currently accessing a food bank. What's the next steps and how soon can we expect to hear back from you? Uh, through the chair, thanks for the question. Um, as as just mentioned earlier, uh, we are actively working with the two leaders in this to get a, a bigger membership and have that real strategic conversation with all of the partners involved. So they're still actively getting more organizations on board, and that's we're meeting on Thursday actually with them on this, and then we will talk strategy around what they want to see. We're going to have timelines put forward on the mapping and the survey. So we can certainly put together timelines after we meet with them and then bring it back to committee for, uh, for uh, information. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's less about making sure all the right people are there, but getting some work. It's more about getting some work done. So um, the sooner that we sort of see some um, exercising of options in the community, the better. It's less about, in my opinion, about council seeing a report and making sure we didn't miss a user group. Let's see some action from, from this initiative because I think it's a dire need right now. Thanks. Councillor Thiessen. I love that Mayor Clayton just said action because I have a whole bunch of actionable ideas. Now, I'm not going to motion any of them, but just some thoughts uh, to consider as we talk about the Food Security Commission. Um, I really like what Councillor Palat's track was with uh, getting the schools involved. We build $10 million schools every time a school goes up, and long have I advocated for like green housing and 
Um, growing food as being part of the science curriculum. Not only will it teach kids sustainability throughout life, but uh, you know we'll have their bellies full with healthy organic foods produced right at the school by the hands of the kids. So if we can, that's an advocacy or a lobby tool for our school boards that maybe we can assist with. Also, other things uh, that have happened around the world, like France made it illegal in the early 2000s for, for grocery stores to throw out food. They has to go past the food bank check-in. So there's something that we might be able to do there. Um, as Councillor Platt mentioned, we should talk to restaurants and other ones. I know Fred's and 14 Food Co. have a hot meal program. Maybe there's some way that we can get those guys involved too. And then finally, in, in World War II, coming out of the Great Depression across North America, and this is starting to get track on Facebook and social media and stuff right now. Um, but municipalities encourage people to ditch their front lawn turf for gardens in, a, in an effort to be sustainable. So, so these are all actionable, low-cost ways that we can maybe improve the lot of life for everyone in Grand Prairie. And I'd encourage you to maybe bring that to the Food Security Commission. And hopefully we can find ways we can all work together to achieve those. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Councillor Bressi. Um, just to tie into Councillor Thiessen's thoughts there, um, again, about last week at the Sustainable Communities Conference, I think Councillor Bressi and I were listening uh, to one of the sessions who, which talked about unsold food from the grocery stores, and Food Mesh is a company that really takes that idea and handles it. it is it a city you know, uh, plan of attack? Potentially not. There is businesses out there that actually do this work already, but I think us knowing about it and you know, um, looking into finding partners is what our role is. Up and above, uh, you know, getting things going on the other side that that uh, Mayor Clayton was talking about. So I think um, it would be feasible for us to look at programs like that and involve everybody at once instead of uh, you know, nickel and diming it. Yeah, Ms. Sutherland. Um, through the chair. Yes, that's, that's a significant part of this, um, the mapping research. And we're talking about what's out there. That's part of this, this. So we know what the lay of the land is like, what are the opportunities, and how we can collaborate collectively to, to make things happen. Another question I've got is an InvestGP question. Maybe it's premature and work going on, but I know that ag agri-foods up has been a significant part of Council's vision for economic development. And is uh, is there inclusion of InvestGP in these conversations yet, or is there a plan to work with InvestGP in the future? Um, through the chair, yes, there's a plan. Awesome. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody else with questions, but would somebody be willing to do the business of moving to receive? Mayor Clayton? Chair Bressi, I would move that committee receive this report for information. Thanks. Thank you. It's an order. Not seeing any discussion or debate. I'll call it a question. Thank you. That motion carries, and we appreciate that report, but you're not off the hook yet. I think you're up for charitable drop off points as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So back in October, uh, October 2022, um, Ms. Bilyana Coburn had come as a delegation and had talked about her fundraising project for Ukraine. And as a part of that, she had uh, requested or identified the need for used items. And as a result of the delegation, um, council had directed administration to review current practices of charitable drop-offs um, at city facilities. Um, so administration did an uh, environmental scan of what the current practices are of, um, of uh, charitable drop-offs and has highlighted a few um, in the report, which include things uh, like the storm um, with Dignity Drive and the drop-off host at Bonnets. Um, we know the Energy and Environment hosts an annual uh, drop and swap, which involves collecting donations as well, and uh, a few other um, kind of ad hoc requests. Um, in, in our research on this, it has been identified that there isn't any uh, official policy practice or procedures around this because they have been relatively uh, few. Um, and if committee or council would like to see further um, resources in, uh, required to look into that, or if there's any plans uh, that committee would, would like, there would be, have to be further work done on um, creating some policies in that. Um, administration has identified though that when we're looking at um, look, uh, accepting donations, some of the risks are uh, management and how, how do we manage that and how do we deal with potential um, 
I say litter, but potential so the materials around and how do we collect and make sure it's clean and things like that. So some, some of the things that we've identified through our discussions with uh, our administration. Um, with that, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Mayor Clayton. Thanks, Chair Bressie. Yeah, for me, there's a couple logical locations. East Link Centre is a community hub. Uh, it makes sense that we participate in the Dignity Drive or other items like that. I understand the risk with other debris ending up in those um, contribution bins, but that risk is anywhere. The Prairie Mall accepts donations for gifts at Christmas time for kids. And, and I know from personal experience, there sometimes is things in there that are not intended to be gift. There's people put an empty coffee cup in there, et cetera. Um, but I think that as we continue to um, see facilities of ours as community hubs, we have to expect that it's a great place for people to support organizations that are in need. I don't think that it means that we are participating in every donation initiative, but I think that there should be consideration um, for ones that are significantly um, valuable in our community. So I'll, I'll leave it to council for other discussion and debate and, and see where we go from here. Uh, I've got a question that's actually maybe better directed at Mr. Miller. Uh, if councillors do receive requests to do this, right now it's a very informal process, and if we don't create a formal process, which I don't know if there's appetite to do that, when we get requests, where would you like us to send people? Is it a call 311? Is it a call the facility manager? Is it connect with CLT? Feel free to pass it off if you want, but I thought I'd start with you. Yeah, maybe I'll just look to Angela if our, if you have any thoughts where the best uh, avenue would be. Would it be 311 or would it be direct to your department? Charitable drop-offs? You can certainly facilitate them through CFD, 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 CSD if that's the easier route. Okay. Um, but perhaps 311 would work too. How about if we, uh, could we circle back? We'll, yeah, totally. Uh, we'll dig into it deeper and uh, we'll get back to all of council. Yeah, and I don't know if I necessarily need to come back in a report or anything. I just want to know where it's more, most helpful for you to have us send people. If Yeah, and what I'll do is I'll commit to sending an email back to uh, council. Great. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? Is anybody willing to make the motion? Uh, Mayor Clayton? Actually, so I do need for re or this uh, report for information. However, I do have some additional business arising. So. Sure, well, why don't you do the other business first? Okay, sure. I would direct uh, uh, administration to bring back a report to this standing committee with uh, potential locations and uh, guidelines for um, city facilities. Uh, in regards to char charitable drop-off. That was kind of messy, but I'm sure it'll come out nicer than that. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Let's give that a minute to get into eScribe. As we're waiting for the eScribe, anybody have any discussion or debate on that? I think for, uh, well, I'll, I'll do discussion debate. I think for um, I think for me, I'm actually going to be a be a no on it. I'm, I'm comfortable with the informal ad hoc one we've got right, process we've got right now, and I'm just conscious that we've got a very long outstanding items list in this committee that we've tasked administration with. And so for me, I totally respect if it gets passed. I'm sure that it'll be good work, but I think for me, it's I'm comfortable with where we are right now. If you know one else in the queue, I can just close. Sure. Um, the reason and intent behind this is exactly that, because we have administration at different facilities that rotate. They have knowledge of different organizations. There's no consistency or in and, and regards to just a direct, easy um, policy in that we accept, we're we willing to accept donations at uh, facility A, B, and C. Here's the guidelines. User groups and, and nonprofits know the policy, and it's, it doesn't interfere. Um, it doesn't put staff in a situation where they have to make decisions of whether or not a, um, a, a, a non-profit is appropriate. So if the policy is just really simple, where we take them and how the process happens and who the contact is, then I think that's just easier for our user groups. Great. Well, I will call that to question. That motion carries. Uh, did you well, Mayor Clayton was persuasive. <laughs> do, you, do you have any other business, Mayor Clayton? Sure, I can uh, move the committee receive this report for information. Is 
That motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Sutherland. And next up, we've got Cricket, and I believe that's Ms. Casually. Thank you through the chair. In the fall, council directed administration to work with the Grand Prairie Cricket Association to identify potential locations for a practice pitch and explore funding options. The association received a, a community improvement grant from the city in the amount of $5,000 to assist with costs associated with construction of the practice pitch adjacent to the existing Northridge cricket field. The field used by the association currently is located within a stormwater management facility and engineering has identified two potential locations within the existing utility that could be considered for the practice pitch area. It is anticipated that the location west of the current pitch that the associ association has identified as their preferred location will be suitable to support the requirements of the practice pitch. Administration continues to work with internal stakeholders to finalize the site plan. Administration met with the president of the Grand Prairie Cricket Association to discuss internal and external funding opportunities. Administration provided information regarding the city's sport hosting grant as well as numerous grant resources and continues to be available to assist, <coughs> excuse me, continues to be available to assist with any external funding applications. Administration also connected the association with the Grand Prairie Regional Sport Connection for added support. Administration recommends that committee receive this report for information. Excellent. Thank you. Is there any Councillor O'Connor? Yes, I would move that this report be accepted for information. Is there any questions or debate? Uh, Councillor Plot. Uh, thanks, Chair Bressy. I, I just, I guess the question I have, and I appreciate that we can receive for information for today, but there was a couple. It seemed like small asks in there that you know we could and there and a, a community group funding grant availability. I'm just wondering what next steps will be to get some of these items funded. Um, is that up to the Cricket Association to go through the community group funding grant application process to, to move these forward now? Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, so there are a number of um, grant options available to the Cricket Club to apply for that the city administration is certainly willing to support them. Um, through and community group funding would certainly be one of those options. So we have been working with um, the Cricket Association to identify um, potential sources and we'll support them in any way that we can. Okay, okay, thanks for that. Any other questions? In case we, oh, Mayor Clayton. Sorry, more just a comment. Um, as um, Ms. Casually, as you're working with the association, definitely reach out to me, happy to write letters of support for any grants that they may be applying for through the provincial or federal government. Thanks. We do have a motion on the table. I need discussion on the motion to accept for information. Great. I'll call that question then. That motion carries. And now for the exciting one of the morning, recreation and culture strategy. And that's still Ms. Gadgley.
anybody happens to be watching online, we haven't dropped the feed. We're just waiting for some technical difficulties to be resolved. Councilor O'Toole's offering to sing a song. <laughs> All right, maybe that's a great idea, uh, Mr. Arlen. Uh, Mr. Lemieux, could we move on to the oil list while we're waiting? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So taking you through the outstanding items list for protective services, um, I would uh, recommend we delete items 1246, which was dealt with at our last meeting, and I <clears throat> forgot to request that that be taken off. Um, items. 1228 was dealt with today, 1225 was dealt with today, and 12, 12, 1226, pardon me, was dealt with today. So those items can be deleted from the uh, outstanding items list. Making progress, I love it. Is there anybody willing to make a motion? Councillor O'Connor. I move that we accept the uh, um, outstanding items list for as amended. Last question. That motion carries. We do not get to adjourn, but how's our tech looking? Um, through the chair, we'll just proceed without the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Thank you, through the, through the chair. Um, the Recreation and, uh, and uh, Culture Strategy um, development consisted of uh, multiple phases that included reviewing the current state, researching uh, sector leading practices, and a significant community engagement plan that involved engaging stakeholders and residents to understand their perceptions, needs, and expectations of municipal recreation and culture services analyzing the findings, and then the strategy was developed as part of the final phase. The strategy will provide elected officials with information needed for future decision-making while providing a starting point for administration to implement recommendations aimed at enhancing the state of recreation and culture. Five themes emer emerged from the research and engagement conducted as part of the planning process. Community capacity, equitable opportunities, innovation, investment, and community celebration. These five themes will inform the direction and strategy of recreation and culture service delivery moving forward. As part of the strategy recommendations, there were 12 uh, objectives, strategic recommendations that have been identified through the key issues and opportunities to advance recreation and culture in the community. 44 actions or tactical um, to support the tactical implementation of the objectives by administration and four big plays, which are considered uh, important considerations that complement the objectives and actions to enhance the provision of recreation and culture in Grand Prairie and ensure alignment with the strategic direction of council. Several implement implementation tools and frameworks were also developed. These support processes and frameworks were developed to support the implementation of recommendations contained in the strategy and uh, also to support future decision making. The tools contained uh, within the strategy have been developed to provide assessment of potential recreation and culture facility investments, uh, sorry, facility developments, as well as project investments. Uh, the framework and tools designed in a manner that will allow for decision making to be adaptable and responsible, responsive to change, changes and trends in the community, shifts in demographics, and to the overall strategic goals um, of the city. In terms of next uh, steps, the strategy is designed to um, guide the provision of recreation and culture services 
and facilities to meet the needs of the community. The next, the strategy will provide direction and strategic foundations to guide future decisions of council and administrations. Once adopted, uh, if adopted by uh, city council, then next steps include development of a fulsome uh, implementation uh, plan, so workshops with administration to um, begin implementation of the strategy, as well as development of a fulsome evaluation plan to assess the efficiency and, and effectiveness of our implementation. And this will include monitoring and then evaluating success. Administration recommends that committee recommend council adopt the recreation and culture strategy as presented. Thank you. Councillor O'Connor. Yes, I move that the uh, council adopt the recreation and culture strategy uh, as presented. Well, it's def definitely happy to get to that motion a bit, but I'll look around and before we vote on it, I'll see if there's any questions or Councillor, I've got Councillor Thiessen, Mayor Clayton, Councillor Plot. Uh, thank you, Chair Bressie. I'd see to Mayor Clayton as she sits on this committee and I can ask my question after. Sure, Mayor Clayton. Thanks for that, uh, Chair Thiessen, or Chair Bressie, and thanks, uh, Councillor Thiessen. Just a question on um, the statistics. They're not quite the current statistics we're using on page eight of the report. And so I just, um, if it's approved today, can they be updated to today's numbers? The median household income isn't correct, the median age. Yeah, so is it possible to have today's numbers in there? Uh, thank you, through the chair. So administration met with uh, InvestGP and the consultant to review the information. So um, the uh, data in the figure um, utilizes projected um, data driven from the 2016 census and then the analytics um, supplied by Esri. So uh, certainly we can look at um, amending them. Um, Invest GP was uh, supportive of the information as presented in the strategy. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them more updated. Invest GP is using more current numbers and, and if we approve this report, it's already seven years old. So, you know, the information in it. So I think that it's important to have up-to-date data. Politicians tend to like to redo reports, and when the next council sees that it's already data that's seven years old, you'll be doing this again. So, thanks. So maybe what might be good if we want to see changes before it comes to council is, Councillor Connor, would you be willing to withdraw your motion for now to receive for information? I would be happy to withdraw my motion. Thank you. Great. And maybe, Mayor Clayton, if there's changes you'd like to see before it gets to council, maybe we should get that in a motion. Sure. I would direct administration to update the report with current statistical data received from InvestGP prior to bringing it to council. Thank you. Um, certainly in order, any discussion or debate? All right, I will call that to question. That motion carries. And then I think I had Councillor Thiessen next in queue. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair Bressy. I just want to make a just make a comment. Um, a lot of times we make uh, we make studies and strategies, and they sit they sit on uh, shelves somewhere because we don't know how to action them. And I really appreciate this report because uh, the way it's laid out, uh, it maps a good direction not only for this council and administration, but for future council and administrations when we're talking about geography, socioeconomic, and uh, where our gaps are. And I think through this, it broadly helps us guide the path. So thank you for the hard work that got put in this. I was trying to be nitpicky though too, because I always like to see a little bit of improvements. I did agree with uh, Mayor Clayton's statement about, hey, we should have a bit updated stats. The only thing that I could find that I was like, oh, how come the Arctic Winter Games isn't in there as our major events, you know? Because uh, to me, it is a major event, but it just wasn't recognized there. Um, but just small things. Um, overall, this is a this is an excellent plan, and uh, I want to commend you and your team and and the other members of our administration that helped to comprise this for us and the future councils. Thank you, Councillor Plot. Uh, thanks, Chair Bressy. Um I'm just happy to see. I guess I'm happy to see on. I think it's I don't know what page it is, but objective number seven under enhanced data collection. Just saying that we're going to have user group numbers, which I think is important when we're talking about building facilities. We don't sometimes know the numbers, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that. One thing I'm wondering about, though, is what I'm not seeing in here, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I missed it in here, but I'm not seeing where our utilization rates of our current facilities are. Like, we get, we constantly get 
told that we're not, we don't have enough buildings, we need more buildings, but I don't know how well they're being utilized. So it's one thing to know the data of how many kids are in hockey, how many kids are in soccer, how many kids are in sports, but that doesn't tell me whether our buildings are being fully utilized or not. And so I'm just wondering, did I miss that somewhere in here or is that a piece of data that would be collectible and something that could be added to this? Thank you, through the chair. Um, the information is not contained um, specifically within the strategy report because it will change frequently, um, but that information is available. It has been provided to um, administration in a separate form, so we could certainly um, attach it for the council presentation. Okay, and just, I'm not a, a voting member on this one, but I, I do think that that's something that if we want that to be continually done, I think it'd be good to have right in the report. Um, I think it's really, really valuable data to know how well our, our facilities are being utilized right down to our scores agreement, you know, um, how, how our buildings are actually being used. So I think that's an important, important piece of data that should be captured in this. But again, I'm not on this committee, so I can't make any motions. But um, for me, I would like to see that be added to this report. I'm going to go to Mayor Clayton because I think she might have something on yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's very valuable information. I also appreciate Councillor Thiessen's comment about the Arctic Winter Games. It was an international event of significance, and so I think it should have been mentioned in there. Um, I guess, Ms. Casale, um is there enough time for you to get that information before we bring it back to Council or in regards to utilization? Tell, what would you prefer here? Um, thank you, through the chair. So some of that information is certainly available. I could um, bring it forward to council and then sure. uh, decide at that time if that was convenient for council. So then, I guess it's already been moved. I think I could have just added it to my other motion, but okay. So um, Councillor Palat, can you tell me the wording specifically that you were hoping to see or to use and I'll, I'll put it into a motion for you. I, I guess for me, I don't know if, um the, the goal of this is probably it's an ongoing document, so it wouldn't be mad, bad to maybe look at an annual utilization rate of all of our facilities around sports and culture. Um, just a one, it doesn't have to be an ongoing, but I think a one-time snapshot every year of knowing what our utilization rates of all of our facilities would actually yeah, help us and, in our decision and, and to be fair, I think that's probably an update to committee. I don't, this is a strategy, right? So I don't think it would be an updating a strategy, but I, I think that's valuable information that it could be an outstanding items list item that and the only reason I, I'm saying it now is these are supposed to be living documents. So yeah. if it's this council decides it's not an appetite, I just I wonder if, if having it embedded right in the, the, the process of what we're going to look at on a strategy moving forward kind of reminds administration that's something we would want to see as a council every year rather than us coming back every year and saying, hey, we'd like to see this report. So that's the only reason I'm saying it. If, if administration's confident they're going to bring it every year, um, great. Um, I just... When I, when I see these reports like that, I like the deliverables within the report sometimes. So that's where my head's going, I guess. Yeah, and I, yeah, I absolutely get where you're going. Sorry, Chair Bressy. Um, but um, this was done by a consultant, and, and, and they've completed their work. I think that a um, annual report in, uh, could be added to. Um, it's valuable information at the Grand Prairie Regional Rec uh, in regards to the administrative working group. But, but I also think that annually, Ms. Casualty, do you see an easy venue for an update to, for that to take place annually? Um, certainly, admin, through the chair, administration could bring that um, forward to the standing committee. Sure. So I think that it's valuable to add it to this report for the strategy, for the one-time strategy, complete the project, but then an ongoing um, in regards to um, an update and, and I'll leave it to administration and Mr. Lemieux to figure out where it best sort of fits in. Um, but I'm happy to make a motion to direct administration to update the recreation and culture strategy to include um, point in time utilization rates at our facilities, as well as um, the inclusion of the Arctic Winter Games as a significant event that we hosted. Thank you. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely in order. Just. Uh, just as you're talking, talking, my thought on this is kind of, so what if we've got that information in the report if there's not an action on it? If council wants to add action on it, maybe it is directing um, to add an action item, something like um, explore opportunities or focus on increasing utilization of facilities. But just if we're if we're going to add something, I'd, I'd rather us add action rather than add just information. Councillor Thiessen. Yeah, thank you very much. I know it's I know it's a big report and it's there's a lot of objectives in there, but I would just point council's attention to objective seven and ten. 
That's in regards to how we make decisions and how we apply them to our recreation facilities, data collection, and all that stuff. I believe that's exactly what Councillor Platt's asking for, but if we want to be more specific, we can include that. But I don't see big changes, and I don't see a miss here either. Just a comment. So, got a, um, so the way I'm understanding the motion that you've put on the table, or Mayor Clayton, is um, you want u utilization rates included in the strategy itself, or you want those... I think that it's, in my opinion, the rates as of today when we receive the strategy is, is statistical information that's useful. Um, the actions that come out of the strategy are separate, in my opinion, and, and it's just, it's a good, you know, this report was done at this date, this is what utilization looked like. Yep. It's valuable information that should be included. So I guess I'll just, uh, a question for Ms. Cajole is, I don't know how long a request like this might take or if there's any urgency to getting this strategy ap approved. So um, I'm just curious, any concern in terms of of if we're asked for more work before this gets approved for council about this messing up timelines you might have for other projects? Thank you, through the chair. Um, no, there's no in immediate impact for the um, strategy to be adopted. It only impacts the sort of um, information sharing with the uh, stakeholders that participated as in focus groups was sort of our next planned implementation. So um, some of these uh, changes are, are um, easy fixes and then we'll work with the consultant to graphically design the utilization information and bring that back to a, a future meeting. Okay, excellent. Uh, so this motion is definitely in order. Any discussion or debate on this motion to amend the report? In case I will call it to question. That motion carries. And Councillor Bosch. Thank you, Chair Bressy. Um, I appreciate that motion. I can't vote on it today, but uh, for me, it's important to know our, our facility um, usage. So uh, my question is on, I had it big here. Uh, the key indicators for utiliz utilization and participation. On some of them, they have a date of 2022, but on the top, I think, four, uh, what dates are we looking at that information of usage? That would be page 11. If it's like, if you could just, t like I'm not sending anything back, one, I can't, it's not my committee, but um, just curious where these numbers come from and, and the timelines in those numbers. Thank you, through the chair. Um, the uh, indicators, the information in the indicators um, related to overall motivations of participation and overall barriers to participation um, were a result of the engagement plan done as part of the strategy. So that would have been done in the first quarter of 2022. Okay. And the next, all of these are 2022? So the, the top four, the bottom two say 2022. I'm just looking for dates and how current they are. And I think probably seeing the data from 2016 makes me a little leery and wanting to make sure that this is cur as current as possible. Uh, through the chair, the um, data related to indicators is um, so was um, the best measure of information. So prior to the pandemic, in some instances, there are a few numbers of 2019 data because that was um, believed to be our sort of most current or reasonable number um, with not having um, some information available for 2020, 2021. Um, and then anything that could be gleaned from 2020 at the time that this strategy was being developed, um, that was it was thought to be a comparator to pre-COVID numbers was utilized. Of course, there's that little two and a half years of <laughs> <laughs> lost. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Any other questions about the strategy? One uh, one I've got is I really appreciate that there's um, concrete actions in this with. Uh, short, medium, and long-term goals. But what I didn't see is, uh, what's has there been any thought yet on what the report back to council is going to be? How council will know this isn't just on a shelf somewhere collecting dust and actually being actioned? Uh, thank you, through the chair. Um, so 
There are some pieces of the strategy already that administration um, has been working on that we could certainly report back through the service area update. Um, but if uh, council would prefer um, something in writing, we could certainly uh, intend to do that before the end of the year. Well, and for me, I'm not so concerned about this year. I'm, I'm more concerned a year or two years out where I, I don't think these things collect us in the first six months. <laughs> Sometimes they do in a couple of years out and just something for us maybe think about is there a annual reporting or uh, every couple year reporting, just something for us to think about when this comes back to us, what expectations we have for report backs. I'm not seeing anybody else with their hands up. And I think we've directed administration to go and do more work and presumably it'll come back to this committee after that work's done. So I'm not sure if we need any other action on this agenda item. Is there any further direction you need for today? Through the chair, no, thank you. Just okay. a Mercury. question yeah. and maybe it's for council or actually it might be for um, legislative services, we passed a motion to adopt it, but it's coming back with changes. Should we be adopting it? I think that was a, a recommended motion, but not one we actually voted on. Okay, good point. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. Well, I think that concludes this agenda item then, and we've already done our outstanding items list, so I think I can call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.